What is up guys, and of course, welcome to our Wi-Fi battle and VPL battle week 5 against, of course, Zinky from your true list guy. Yeah, I actually pulled that off. Hey, anyway, he brought the team. I was pretty close of actually figuring out myself. Um, outside, of course, not bringing mana fee for this specific game or gold bats. So, with that said, Palos One is going to play a massive role here for Rocks, at least. And outside of that, you know, I have to make evolve really early here. I really need to get that Mega Evolution going really fast. Because I really have not too much to fear when it comes to my offensive output. But I need to ensure that Rock stays off the field from my side at least. Since I don't have any spin off my own, of course. So, <laughs> yay me. <laughs> I do believe I have like two months weak to it. So, uh -huh. But anyway, with that said, of course, Mega the Energy might push those away from the field. Plus massive, massive damage output when it comes to whatever... The engine comes in, but it has both Sceptile and, of course, uh, Thunders with just out speed. They are annoying to be dealing with, and uh, I have to find a way to work around that properly. And um, basically, I need to scout for possible Scarfers. Uh, I do fear Infernape being scarfed this game, so I'm going to have that in mind versus it. I'm actually going to lead off with Mega Denshi because I really just ensure that rocks never hit the field, like I said. And I do have protection. Yeah, not, not a condom though, but I do have protect. So hopefully I can kind of waver myself around a bit. And also, the exposure on the video is a bit too high on the contrast, so sorry about that. All for making the quality better, it just might not it might have turn worse. But anyway, with all that said, let's go. So, right, yeah, from the get-go here, he is just going to lead off with Infernape. Honestly, that is, you know, the proper lead to do it. And I'm just going to make a ball, so I'll just let music speak for itself. I swear that is like the best animation work I've ever done. Uh, but anyway, yeah, he's just gonna keep going for U-turns here. So that I would figure out that maybe he's scarfed or not. It could also be the Sword Arc, which is something I had in mind. So all I really can do here is try to wave everything around it. As it goes for a second U-turn, I figure out whatever this is, this is scarfed. Because he would not risk the damage output from uh, Dayenshi. Because it hurts, and it hurts a lot actually. So he's gonna go to Jin, of course, being the Thunderous. I can't stay in. Thunderbolt does KO me, and I need, of course, my Jellicent for this. So I'm just gonna go to Forkbid and uh, basically try to take any damage he does to me. As he goes for a Q turn, and we're gonna see life for Rears. All of thinking, okay, that that's good, because that means it's possible the Sorok, but didn't really do all that much. It might be the real Thunderous with only a U turn. So he's gonna go to Stefila. I know I can take a regular power, uh, powered, uh, huge power. Waterfall as he goes for play rough, and that is bandage. So had a waterfall mid there, I would have lost Forkbeer right there and not get rocks on the field, which now are here to stay. Feeling that is just obviously going to try to KO me. I'm gonna go to beta max, which will not be able to take this damage output necessarily that well, but I will be able to take it. I don't have any switches for it. I, I really don't. So you know he he gets the damage and <laughs> it is what it is. And I basically go for a Poison Jab as he switches into Thunderous. And due to me being adamant and Life Orb, this is actually due to his Life Orb damage enough to KO this Thunderous. Which is awesome! And also kind of scary, because that means he has nothing to paralyze my Scallopede. Which also means I can bat him past probably freely from here on out. So all I'm gonna do now is actually stay in here and uh, he's gonna go to Jimmy, the memo, and... Um, Feeling that it's very possible that he could go for Ice Shot, I'm just gonna scout for that. So I go for the Protect as he goes for Knockoff. And I might have played a bit dumb here. I was feeling right, he goes for Knockoff, he doesn't have Ice Shot because he would show that directly. <laughs> Fuck me, right? So <laughs> he gets the Scully Beat out of the way, um, which is awful because obviously I needed that speed boost because the game just got a lot harder for me. Now, Necromedusa can't really do too much against Mamoswine, but I can actually burn it in return as he goes to Genji. So now the second, you know, kind of good option is out of the way, which means that I could have, have Tornadus to actually stop this from ever mega evolving how to speed it. I don't do that now. Luckily, I get his burn in case he packs the Rock Slide. So it's both good and bad, but the thing is here, he's definitely going to go for Dragon Pulse. He's not going to go for a Leaf Storm or Gate Rain. 
but I can't risk that. I simply can't risk if Rallys take on both of those kind of damage output really well, if not well enough. So all I really can do here is stay in and try to hurt him as he goes for Dragon Pulse, and the Dragon Pulse output shows me that he's probably timid because he doesn't do as much as a modest would do. And I am free to stay in here as he switch out to his Mammoth Swine. And due to we not see a life orb, I definitely know I can take an ice shard with no worries here. Uh, so all I really fear is I didn't see life orb that it could be Rindleberry, but you know I'm gonna gamble, I'm gonna risk it, I'm gonna go for Grass Knot. He isn't Rindleberry, and that knocks out the Mammo. So, yay me, yay. <laughs> so that crit didn't matter, but still that's kind of insane. So uh, King Julian is gonna come in here and, you know, really, I... I don't want to risk whether or not this thing is Scarfed or not. If it is Scarfed, then Flare Blitz does kill me. So I have to switch out. I really, really do. So I'm going to bring Necromedusa as uh, he U-turns. Of course he U-turns. <laughs> I'm being dumb. And, and just let him get back momentum. And, um, you know, he gets the crit also. It's kind of a fair output there, isn't it? Um, obviously not mattering that much. So Stephila is going to come in. I know I can take a bandit play rough and I go into retaliate with Will O' Wisp. Since I don't have any switch in, I'm going to basically lose Jellison for this matchup. But at least I get to burn, which is so crucial. Uh, now I could try to switch in anything here and try to go preserve Jellison, but Jellison doesn't outspeed anything, which means it will basically be a sitting duck for the next matchup, and I'm not gonna play that game. I simply am not. So we lose Jellison here, but I think he did some valuable plays getting few two things burned that could actually outpace me. So I'm gonna go to Safira, of course, the Latios, basically go for energy ball and just knock it out. There's no way it's taking this and uh, I was fearing could switch in Sceptile here trying to soak it. But then again, Asumeril is kind of a waste here, isn't it? So anyway, he brings Genji, which is obviously not a burn Genji anymore, which means all right, that, that is a Sora. That is the Sora that we have been looking for. But that's good. Now we know that every time it comes in, it's a Sceptile. And uh, that it, if it is a burn, then we know exactly which one that is. So I can safely bring Dayenshi here as he go for a U-turn. I mean, of course you go for a U-turn. My god, I just keep doing this. and <laughs> So he gets momentum back on again. Luckily for me, though, um, I have the option here to actually go for Protect. As it brings King Julian, and I'm pretty sure that his Infernape is Scarfed, that I can at least you know, go for Protect, see what he decides to go for, then switch out. And he goes to an earthquake, and that's good because that means that Varalis or Tornadus can come back in and um, basically just exist. <laughs> because there's only so many things again you can do with residual damage of burn and stuff like that. Septal is falling, and it's falling fast. Now the thing is, Septal is, ex ex uh, is actually really, really, really dangerous. But it's, as long as I'm Tornadus. Um, Sceptile doesn't do the hefty damage it's po it's able to do, and uh, as you guys see, Dragon Pulse doesn't do really that much it possibly should do, and uh, that, that's obviously extremely helpful. So anyway, Sceptile's gonna get knocked out, luckily for me, because now it means he has enough to outspeed me outside of the Scarfers, and I say Scarfers because uh, I'm actually going to get, or I'm gonna switch out sacking of course, uh, Fork Bit here, because I really don't want to take a risk, even if it goes for a... Flare Blitz here, um, Dayenshi is actually 2 hit killed by it, so it's not a, it's not an ideal play. So I'm just gonna risk Folk Bit going down here, and uh, he actually survives the Flare Blitz, which is just, wow. Those extra defenses though, those extra defenses! <laughs> uh, but you know, it's not like I can do a much damage back to it anyway. So Flare Blitz here will take out me, or take me out, take out me, yeah. English. <laughs> And uh, I'm basically gonna bring safely my Latias and go or Safira and go for a Dragon Pulse. Now, mind you guys, in the team analysis, I did say I didn't go fully offensive special attack, mostly because I didn't need to, or at least so I was thinking, as C switched out, of course, to Sorark. And um, yeah, I, I will say this this is just my luck, really. I go for, you know, 212 in special attack instead of fully, and this is the result of that. It lives. I don't know how much it lives with, but it does survive it. So I was like, oh, fuck me. So anyway, I have to switch in with Neptunia. He has to go for Night Days, right? So I was thinking, I can definitely soak that. Uh, even with Life Orb, he's just going to fall to it anyway. So he goes for Night Days. He isn't Life Orb. Uh, so I feel like, all right, I go for Rock Polish, wrapping things up. There's a second Scarfer. He's Scarf 2. 
And I'm gonna lose accuracy here, which is, you know, awesome, right? That, that, you know, that is what you want. As I'll just rock polish, and as long as I land my Moonblast now, this should be GG. So, Sorak's gonna get a Moonblast to the face, you know, they love that, you know, that, that's a typical Sorak thing. Love the moon and stuff like that, hull and stuff like yeah, you know, exactly. And his last Pokemon is, of course, a Fern Ape, and like I said, as long as I land a Moonblast, this is pretty much GG, and even if I would have missed the Moonblast, he still wouldn't have uh, the capabilities of defeating my three remaining mons. But this was actually a very, very mighty game. I was fearing everything that Danky did throughout the match. I think he missed out on a few offensive plays, but outside of that, I think he played his game well. It just was one of those things where, you know, I gambled a few things and it, it paid off in my favor for once. So yeah, of course, the obvious afterthoughts has to be included. And before I say anything else, do check out Danky's channel. He has so many league battles on his channel, and he's such a good player in general, um, so he needs all the support he can get, and uh, he makes really, really good content, so you definitely should check him out. And I don't believe this game does him so much justice, and it's mostly because, well, I get a massive momentum this game, and that never really, well, was held off by any chance. Um, first and obvious thing, um, he not going for waterfall against my Pillow Swine was probably a very, very decisive play, even knock off to that extent. Uh, and I get rocks up really, really, really early. I do believe the residual damage he gets against him really early um, does kind of um, domino, domino throughout his team, basically. Uh, had I lost, of course, my Pillow Swine that early in game, I probably would have lost this game, actually. I'm pretty sure because that would have meant that um, Funders would not have been KO'd by the Poison Jab from, of course, Scolipede. Uh, those extra damage there definitely did help out. And also, you know, obviously, <laughs> as that transpired, things as, as Funders was gone, I, s I had a much, much easier game to uh, switch around in. And yeah, honest, honest to God, though, uh, had Funders been still active, I'm pretty sure I would not have been able to actually win this game. Since I do lose Scolipede. Uh, as the game transpired, and I'm pretty sure that I would have lost the Scolipede in the same fashion, no matter how this game was turning out. But yeah, outside of that, I think Dan play a very good game. Uh, he does a lot of good predictions. He U-turns very, very smartly, and I do believe using two Scarfer was an ideal situation for, for what I was facing. I was a bit surprised seeing Sorok not being a life orb, but I understand also why he decided to go that route, and I actually I don't disagree with that. Um, he told me later on the chat that he did it mostly because Dianity would other just destroy his sword arc. But uh, I was feeling Sucker Punch Life Orb would be very useful for my team, but I can also see why he did decide to do it, and I actually think he, had, he is in the right of doing just so. Infernape is a tough having Scarf against my team due to uh, me having two Protectors, I believe, but outside of that, it did damage on my team. It was all a matter of doing the right predictions, and with Protect, it's kind of tough. Had I not having a protect two months with protect, that might have transpired a lot differently, actually. But yeah, that's pretty much the size of things. Um, thank you so much, Dan, for the battle. And like I said to you guys, check him out. He's a tremendous battler. Love his content, and I'm pretty sure you guys will too. And uh, with all that said, guys, thank you, of course, so much for watching. And I see you in the next VPL battle. Until then, take care. Bye.